Hi, this is Michael, and this is the unboxing and review of the Soul Fitness SB700 spinning bike. And I'm telling you, this is quite a heavy box. This is how you're going to get it. Read this carefully. If you, if you uh, suspect that it might have been dropped in shipment, you could have a serious problem. So make sure you check your box at the corners to make sure there's no crushing. Because what will happen is these pieces down here, this is the support that uh, bolts through this piece on the frame, on the front and the back. And if it's dropped during shipment, there's a possibility that this could get bent which uh, I have uploaded photos in the user gallery to indicate how they got bent for my first shipment. So just check your box carefully and the reason this happens is right here. 154 pounds. It's a very very heavy box. So let's unbox it and see what we've got inside. Alright, the easiest way to get this unboxed is get a box cutter and you want to just cut around the entire bottom part of the box. You might want to leave like one or two inches. Unfortunately the box itself doesn't have any instructions on how to unbox it so if you weren't cutting it at the bottom you'd probably just open it at the top like this and good luck trying to get it out. You'd have to tip the thing sideways, slide it out. It's really a pain. So the best way is to cut the bottom uh, of the box all the way around and then you can just simply lift the box off. So when you come, when I come back, uh, the bike will be out of the box. All right. Once you unbox the bike, this is what you've got inside the box. Uh, the bike frame is sandwiched between some big styrofoam things, and all the various components for the bike are just uh, sort of taped inside. And what you'll find at the very, very bottom of the box, inside here, this is kind of funny. This is where the instructions are to tell you how to get the bike out of the box. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, uh, as I mentioned, if the box is dropped on the corner during shipment, you're going to see cracked styrofoam. And I just noticed that this was cracked. So obviously this box was dropped at some point. And uh, I don't have this fully unpacked yet, but I'm sure hoping that this isn't bent like it was on the first one. We'll find out in a minute. All right, I've also noticed on the other end of the box, now that I've got it apart, I can see that the styrofoam is cracked on this end as well, down at the bottom. So we've got to check to make sure that isn't been bent as well. All right, I've got everything unboxed, and there is the spinning bike. Here are the front and rear stabilizer bars, which get attached here on the front and back. And, of course, the handlebar. Uh, integrated uh, water bottle holder comes with a very small water bottle here's our pedals the hardware uh, this is the sensor and this is the display and I'm gonna put this together and we're gonna see how it works alright I wanted to give you a heads up about a little problem I was having as I was installing the handlebars onto the plate the plate I was extremely extremely careful as I was putting the uh, the bolts through the handlebar and then into the threads down here. The bottom two went in just fine, but the top two I was getting resistance, so rather than risk stripping the threads, I immediately backed it out. And then I ran the bolt through the back side first to clear any debris or whatever might have been clogging up those threads. So you want to make sure you don't cross thread or strip these as you're putting on the handlebars. Just use a lot of caution there. All right, here's another quick tip for you. When you get to uh, installing the transmitter, you're going to find the sensor wire is wrapped in a little plastic bag. And it's all, it's just sort of like this. And there's three of these little zip tie straps. And you'll see all three of them there. And it's not really clear which one you want to cut. Well, I'll tell you, you don't want to cut the ones that are going through the frame. You want to cut the, the one that's going to be in the middle of these two. You have to snip that in order to release the wire. Then you feed the wire down through the frame so that it comes down below. And this is where the transmitter attaches to Velcro on the chain housing. 
on the drive housing there. So that's something that was very confusing to me, and I hope this helps you out a little bit. One more things I wanted to mention. I did notice there was a one inch square piece of sticky backed foam, and I could not figure out where that goes. I finally discovered that it probably goes in between uh, the electronic assembly here and the mounting bracket. That just gives it a little bit of extra cushioning, and um, so that's where that goes. You just sort of have to jam the screwdriver through there to make a hole for the screw, which, which attaches the uh, the bracket to the readout device here. Also, I wanted to show you the display. Uh, it's a very nice looking display. It does show you RPM, um, speed at the bottom here can be cycled through speed, distance, and time. And then if you do have a heart rate monitor, that'll display your heart rate up in this area here. This is uh, kilocalories, and then this is an indication of your RPM. Um, also, I had a few parts left over, and these are like cable tie mounting brackets which go on the frame somewhere. I have no idea where they go or what they're for. And then I had some extra cable ties, and then there was also inexplicably a CR2032 uh, battery. Soul told me that that is for the units that do ship with a heart rate monitor. So if you didn't get a heart rate monitor with yours, at least you got a free battery. Um, the handlebar has just a little bit of wobble. Um, that might be able to be tightened here. I've already got this tightened pretty tightly, but there is a very good amount of fore and aft adjustment on the handlebar. You can see how much travel there is here. And also, very similarly on the seat, you've got a very good amount of travel. You've also got uh, height adjustment on the seat and on the handlebar. And all the adjustments are accomplished by uh, a very heavy duty lever and cam action here. So, this is a pretty substantial piece uh, that seems very strong and durable. Um, I did notice a clunking sound on mine as I was pedaling. I'm not really sure what that is. It might just be a minor misadjustment. Uh, it's not doing it when I do it by hand, but when I get on the bike I do hear a little bit of a clunking. All in all, this is a beautiful spinning bike. It's very heavy, 154 pounds. It's very stable. It doesn't wobble at all. I've even got the thing on a carpet right now and it's it's very very steady. It's very quiet. Um, I did notice a little flaw here on the handlebars. Not a big deal but when you spend this much money for a bike you like to see perfection. I think you'd be very happy with it. It's definitely so much uh, more solid and smooth riding than the budget bikes that you see out there for a couple hundred dollars. Um, you know you do pay for it and it's worth every penny. This has been my review of the Soul um, SB700. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. I'll answer it if I can. Have a great day.